Hey there, I'm Tom from BarLenses.com and today I'm going to take a look at Canon's new line of mirrorless RF lenses for the EOS R and RP to see how they compare to their equivalent EF lenses. Mirrorless comes with a load of advantages over DSLRs, but one in particular that aids in lens design is flange distance. Flange distance is a measurement of the space between the sensor plane and the lens mount. And in the case of mirrorless, the rear element of the lens is even closer to the sensor. Having the lens sit closer to the sensor means eliminating the need for a retrofocal element group. In short, you're left with less extreme image correction, fewer lens elements, and in many cases, a sharper image. We're gonna be looking at Canon's 50mm f1.2 L RF lens and the 24 to 105 f4 L RF lens, seeing as both of these lenses have an EF mount sibling. I'll be examining autofocus, sharpness, color rendition, weight, and price. I'm hoping that by testing these new lenses against their older counterparts, we'll uncover what kind of improvements Canon has implemented in their new line, and if it's enough to warrant upgrading to their new mirrorless line. Let's jump in. Canon's new 50mm f1.2 L RF lens is pretty big. Weighing in at just over two pounds, the RF is built from 15 elements in nine groups with a 10-bladed aperture. Canon's EF 50mm f1.2 L is quite a bit lighter at nearly half the weight, has eight elements in six groups, and an eight-bladed aperture. The RF has a minimum focusing distance of 40 centimeters, where the EF comes in at 45 centimeters. Looking at only specs and the lenses themselves, the RF has the leg up, but let's see how they compare from a performance standpoint. Right off the bat, wide open, the 50mm RF is razor sharp, especially when compared to the EF. It's not until around F4 that the EF begins to catch up to the RF's wide open sharpness. The RF also appears to have slightly more contrast. Of course, the EF50 is a workhorse and has been a favorite of photographers for a long time. I use it quite often, but it's an old design and Canon has done a great job offering an improved option, even though it's for a new mount. After spending some time testing out the autofocus of each of these lenses, I can safely say that they perform really well. Both lenses are snappy and accurate. I'd feel confident with either of these lenses from an autofocus standpoint. I think it's pretty clear who takes the crown here. The RF, while heavy, is a vastly superior lens in terms of image quality. It's really sharp wide open, no doubt about it. In terms of autofocus, both lenses perform really well, and we've tested this in the past as well. Canon did a great job optimizing compatibility with their EF line of lenses and even third-party lenses. The RF is a much heavier lens, but I think the image quality is a fair trade-off. I think where the RF falls short is in price. It's a $2,300 lens and the EF50 1.2L can be had in some places for a little over a thousand. Even with the EF to RF adapter, the 50 EF is still much less expensive. However, from a rental standpoint, the EF 50 mil and adapter will run you $70 for seven days and the RF will cost you a little over a hundred for seven days. I think that cost increase is easily justifiable given how solid the RF 50 is is the remarkable sharpness and contrast of the RF50 enough to warrant spending almost $1,300 more than the EF50? I'll leave that up to you. Next up, I'd like to take a look at Canon's RF24-105 f4L and compare it to the EF24-105 f4L. The RF is almost exactly two pounds in weight, has 18 elements in 14 groups and a nine bladed aperture. The EF on the other hand is actually slightly heavier, has 17 elements in 12 groups, but has a 10 bladed aperture. Both are equipped with image stabilization and have a minimum focusing distance of 45 centimeters. On paper, these lenses are very similar and both lenses are within a hundred bucks of each other. But let's see what the tests have to say. Once again, the RF is sharper, but the disparity in sharpness is not nearly as severe as in the case of the 50s. In terms of contrast, I think the EF gets this one, but once again, it's pretty slight. From a practical standpoint, I think it's safe to say that these two lenses are fairly evenly matched. In terms of autofocus, both perform really well. Again, these lenses are fast and very accurate, but the RF's focusing motor is whisper quiet. I think in this case, the RF is the winner. It's lightweight, produces great images, and has quiet autofocus. But really, it's not like it blows the EF24-105 out of the water. Both are standard lenses, and both work really well. 
The only real downside to the EF lens I can see is that the entire package, when mounted to the EOS R with an adapter, becomes slightly unwieldy and even heavier. For someone who might be hiking or shooting for a long day, a few ounces can make a difference. So at the end of the day, it's pretty clear to me that Canon is making great strides with their RF lenses. And when they finally release lenses like the upcoming 85 1.2 and 70 to 200 2.8, I'm guessing they'll be top notch in terms of image quality. But if you already own equivalent EF lenses, you might as well adapt them. We know for a fact that the EOS R's autofocus when paired with EF lenses is fantastic. So there you have it. While there are plenty more lenses to test, I think Canon is right on the money with their new line. Some people were unimpressed with the EOS R and didn't see it as enough of an improvement over the 5D4, but in my opinion, lenses this good make upgrading to the EOS R worthwhile. If you have a question, leave us a comment, and if you want to learn more, visit our blog. If you're curious, you can try the EOS R and the current RF lenses by renting them at barlenses.com. Thanks for watching.